If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video, try the question on your own before listening on. We're going to go ahead and graph vectors R and S. We'll color vector R in red and vector S in blue. We can see that vector R has a magnitude of 4.5 and a direction of 323 degrees measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So of course our positive x-axis is located right here. If we're going to go counterclockwise, 320 degrees, then we would go as follows. We have 90, 180, 270, and then go about 50 degrees more, and that's going to give you the location of vector r. And again, we know that the magnitude of vector r is 4.5 and then this angle was 320 degrees. Let's graph vector S. The magnitude is 7.3 and the angle is 85 degrees. So again, measure from this positive X axis and you're gonna go out 85 degrees. Now, 85 degrees would fall just short of 90, so maybe about right there. This would be vector, whoops, vector S. The magnitude is 7.3, and this angle was 85 degrees. So far, so good. Now, for part A, we have to find the dot product between these two vectors. And we recall that the dot product, it can be found in a couple of different ways, but in this case, it's most convenient to use the following. We can take the magnitude of R, multiply it by the magnitude of S, and then multiply by the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. Now it will be very important to find the correct angle between the two vectors. That's going to be this angle right here. So whatever that value is, that will be the theta that we plug into our dot product formula. Notice, if you look carefully, that this angle right here would have to be 40 degrees. And the reason that it's 40 degrees, of course, is because it's, it gets a little crowded in here. A, starting at the positive x-axis, if you went around a complete circle like that, you'd have 360 degrees. The red angle is marked as 320, so to complete the 360 degrees, you'd have to go 40 more degrees to get back to where you started on the positive x-axis. So that angle is 40 in purple. We know the blue angle is 85. And it is hopefully apparent that if you added 85 to 40, that would give you this entire green angle. So 85 plus 40 degrees, that's going to give us 125 degrees. That's what we're going to plug in. So we come down here to do the dot product. We take the magnitude of R, which is 4.5, multiplied by the magnitude of S, and then multiplied by the cosine of 125 degrees. And of course, make sure your calculator is set to degree mode. When you calculate this, you should get about negative 18.8. And that would be the correct answer to part A. Now in part B, we're being asked for the cross product, which is a little bit trickier to find. So just like with the dot product, there are actually a couple of ways of finding the cross product. I'm going to do it in the following way so that you have a better understanding of how to do any cross product between two vectors. When you do a cross product, you want to begin by setting up this sort of template. And I want you to notice two things, a couple of things about this template is that we have the I hat, J hat, K hat vector notation and paying Pay special attention to the signs between them. You're always going to have a minus sign between i hat and j hat, but then a plus sign between j hat and k hat. So the template is set up like this. The challenge will be to fill in these spaces here, and I'm going to show you how to, how to do so. And to fill in those three spaces, you actually need to come back down and examine this table right here. Now we can see that this table takes our two vectors and it breaks them up into their x, y, and z components. If we look back at our original picture, it is hopefully obvious that the z components for both of these vectors will each be zero. And, and the reason that the z components are zero is because these vectors lie in the x, y plane. They're not actually projecting onto the z plane. They're not 
coming out towards us, nor are they pointing away from us into our computer screen. So the Z components are both zero. So we can actually come into this little chart here and fill in zero for both this position and this position. Now, as for the X and Y components, we do remember that the X component for vector R would be its magnitude times the cosine of the given angle. And then the Y component would be the magnitude multiplied by the sine of the given angle. So let's fill in the X component. We're going to take the magnitude of vector R, which again was 4.5. And we're going to multiply that by the cosine of the given angle, which was the 320 degrees. And then for the y component of vector r, we're going to have 4.5 times the sine of 320. We will follow a similar procedure for the x component of vector x. It's going to be the magnitude of vector s times the cosine of its angle. And then the y component will be the magnitude times the sine of its given angle. The magnitude of vector s was 7.3, and its angle was 85 degrees. So for the x component, we'll have 7.3 cosine of 85 degrees. And then the y component, we're going to have 7.3 sine of 85 degrees. Now you're going to want to pick up your calculator and punch in all four of these values and simplify them to decimal form. So here are the results of those calculations. Now to use this grid to fill in those three missing spaces is what we need to do to finish off this problem. Now here's how it works. For the space in front of i hat, what you're going to do is you're actually going to, perhaps with your hand or with a pencil, is lightly cross off the i hat direction. And then with what remains, this sort of two by two matrix, if you will, you're going to do what is called the determinant. And so basically all it involves is some cross multiplying. So you're going to cross multiply diagonally this way. So you would have negative 2.89 times zero. And then you're going to subtract the result of cross multiplying the other way. So you'll have 7.27 times zero. Now it's getting a little cluttered in here, but hopefully we realize that this entire result would just equal zero because you're gonna end up with zero minus zero. So that means that this first blank space overall will have a value of just zero. Now to fill in the space in the J hat direction, you're going to cover up with your hand or lightly cross it off with your pencil, the J hat portion of this table. And then you do that cross multiplying determinant. So you're going to cross multiply this way, which would give you zero, and then subtract what you would get by cross multiplying that way, which is also zero. So once again, zero minus zero is zero. So the little space in front of j hat is going to just be zero. Finally, for k hat, you're going to cover up the k hat column of your table. And we're going to make some room here because we're going to need it. I'm going to slide this over. That didn't help much, but it's all right. So we're going to cross multiply. We're going to go this way first. So 3.45 times 7.27. And then subtract what we get by cross multiplying that way. I'll just have to come down here. So we'll have 0.636 times negative 2.89. So you're going to work that all out on your calculator. And when you do that, you should get approximately 26.9. And so this would be the magnitude of the cross product, 26.9. The direction you can hopefully see would be in the k hat direction. And that's also known as the z direction. The reason for that is because both the i hat and the j hat were zero. So your final answer would be 26.9 k hat and these didn't really have units on them, so it's just 26.9 units, k hat.